Read what up, boys. Shout out to the Lost Boys. Y'all stay intact. All right, so peace. Everybody here in the building. Thank you for listening to Read BBS. Thank you. Read BBS, BBS. We got David Benavides, El Bandera Roja versus Caleb Sweet Hands Plant. Benavides is 26 and 0, 23 KOs, two time, two time former WBC super middleweight champion. Sweet Hands Plant, 22 and 1, 13 KOs, former IBF. Super middleweight champion. They'll be fighting Saturday, March 25th, my father's birthday, no less, at the MGM Grand in Lost Wages, Nevada, on Showtime pay per view. They uh, had a press conference recently. <clears throat> the press conference was quite, quite contentious. To the point there was no official stare downs, no face offs, and the fighters had to be separated several times during the proceedings. Now, the vast majority, if not all, of the aggression came from the Benavidez camp, including, including the father head trainer, Jose Benavidez Sr. My man, he was going in, he was going in on plant, calling him a bitch, a coward. Telling them don't run, fight like a man, even saying we are gonna beat your ass, or words to that effect. Like we, like like he's actually like it's a tag team fight, two on one or some shit. But you know, I digress. And David reciprocated. David reciprocated. It was almost like a crazy Angel Garcia, you know, Danny's father vibe. It was a Floyd Mayweather Senior vibe. Tiafimo Lopez Sr. vibe, Ruben Guerrero, Robert Guerrero. You know, it was one of them aggressive <clears throat> boxing dad vibes, which I've never really seen from Benavidez Sr. Personally, maybe maybe it's always been there. <clears throat> Get my goddamn throat clear. Or maybe there's just something specific to Plant that he doesn't like. But it was what it was. And Plant wasn't tripping hell. He responded by saying he promises to make weight and to not test positive for cocaine. <laughs> which was a direct dig at Benavidez, which if uh, I'll elaborate on for the uninitiated, if you don't know. But yeah, there's been a war of words between these two camps on social media for years. Twitter beef. Twitter beef. There's genuine and mutual, more importantly, mutual dislike. Plant says that uh, heated up when Jose Sr. name dropped his deceased daughter. But Jose Sr. denies ever saying that, you know, so it's uh, some he said, she said. Or actually, it's some he said, he said shit. But before we delve deeper into this matchup, I need you to uh, subscribe comment remember sharing is caring love tap and or bitch slap that like button for your boy and shout out to the homies at fightbeat.com can you step to this David Benavidez uh, he's the youngest super middleweight champion ever won the title at 20 years of age uh, he's called the Mexican monster so saith Mike Tyson. If Mike Tyson said, who, who, "Who's gonna, uh, who's gonna deny it?" Yeah, exactly. I wouldn't either. Six consecutive KOs. Benavidez first got on the radar via favorable impressions, sparring the likes of Triple G and Peter Quillen. I could see him for real, probably beating the shit out of Peter Quillen and sparring. Like I couldn't. I wasn't there, but you're telling me. He sparred Peter Quillen. Yeah, Benavidez probably got with him. Probably slept his ass a time or three. Undefeated. 
as I stated earlier, yet stripped twice. So how you undefeated but lost your title twice? Well, that gets to the whole point that uh, Plant made. First time Benavidez was stripped, for those who don't know. Uh, he tested positive for cocaine, which I don't know that that's a performance-enhancing drug. However, per the WBC, hey, you test positive for coke, we're stripping you of the title. Benavidez was stripped, got it back. Next time he got stripped, it was because he couldn't make weight. So, there it is. He's a, uh, Benavidez is a Phoenix native who's now moved to Seattle. And I think that was a wise move. Sometimes the place you're from ain't the best place for you. Everybody knows you there. And you're trying to do this thing over here professionally. Not to say you don't still visit home. Not to say Benavidez doesn't even still have a home in Phoenix. I'm sure he does. But in terms of living there, especially training there, that's not good. You know, he was part of that Phoenix uh, street life, dude. I mean, hell, his brother Jose Jr. got shot in the leg. And Jose Jr. wasn't a bad fighter. Uh, go back to his fight with Jose Jr.'s fight with Terrence Crawford. He's not a bad fighter at all. And Crawford stopped him in the 12th and final round. But that's just it. He had already been shot before that fight. And Jose Jr.'s never been the same. So it was good and smart that David got up out of there to pursue his career. Uh, the area code switch seems to have helped. You know, the weight, his weight hasn't been an issue for more than like two years now. But here's the thing, like, he has what I call Riddick Bow Body. Riddick Bow Body. Like, David Benavidez, he's Larry Holmes built. He's fleshy. He's always going to be fleshy. Yet efficient. You know, he's not going to be the sculpted, Herculean looking dude. But it boils down to this. Do you want to be Bruce Seldon or Mike Weaver? Or do you want to be Riddick Bow or Larry Holmes? Choose wisely. Choose wisely. Choose wisely. As for Mr. Plant, Caleb Plant, the Travis Kelsey, the Robin Thick of boxing. He's got uh, Stephen Breadman Edwards, man. That's uh, their first fight together. He stretched Andre Durrell. In fact, he couldn't have responded. Well, Anthony Durrell, I'm sorry. And he couldn't have responded to a unification loss to Canelo better than his one hitter quitter KO over Anthony Durrell. Ninth round. Uh, same round as Ben Avedis. Even though it was three years earlier when Benavidez stopped the rail. But KO's KO, man. There's a, uh, on paper, there's a one inch height difference, half inch reach difference. But Benavidez just seems bigger and certainly looked apart at the press conference. Now, of course, you know, neither man's on weight. But Benavidez just seemed, he just exuded bigness in terms of him versus Plant. Not that size alone will win a fight, because it, it, it doesn't always do that. To that, Plant uh, requested a 22 by 22 foot ring. Now, Jose Sr. bitched about it at the press conference, yet he's the trainer and manager of his son and agreed contractually to a 22 by 22 foot ring. So why are you bitching, sir? Why, why are you bitching? thing is, uh, David Benavidez, he counter punches very well. He leads well. He has great punch selection. He has uh, good accuracy in punch placement. He's an even-handed puncher, meaning, you know, he may hit harder with this hand than the other, but he can hurt you with either hand, is what I mean when I say even-handed puncher. But he's not fleet of feet. He is not fleet of feet. And Caleb Plant is, you know, so that that could that that's why the 22 by 22 ring is implemented on Plant's part, and it, it could play a role. I'm not even going to do a prediction here. I'm just talking about the fact the fight is happening now, which brings me to Canelo and the fact that this is for the interim WBC 
super middleweight title. Uh, this is the best fight to be made at super middleweight since Canelo is non-committal and fully, fully in control of all four sanctioning bodies by virtue of his status, and more importantly, the fight purses he generate generates. You know, for the WBC, the WBA, the WBO, and the IBS. Like, they're the sanctioning body, uh, the uh, sanctioning fee, I'm trying to say, for a Canelo fight? Oh, Lord. That, that pales, that, 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 that's as big as probably six or seven other title fights that they could do, any of them sanctioning bodies. So they're not stupid. Whatever Canelo wants to do, he's going to be able to do. I just hope that, uh, Instead of going for Bevo, he does the right thing and makes it happen in 68, especially after this fight, like in September. The wall's closing in. Like, that's it. The wall's are closing in on Canelo. The winner of this fight will be uh, the WBC interim champion. And with that said, Canelo, hell, his uh, last WBC mandatory was Yildirim, which was February 20. February 27th of 2021. So we're almost two full years. Two full years removed from Canelo fulfilling a WBC mandatory. When are we going to get around to uh, that? You know, Canelo, he's not scared of David Benavidez. But he's definitely leery. The fact that the instant Benavidez was stripped from missing weight, and Canelo pounced on the title and convinced the WBC to put their belt in the pot, along with the uh, in the, in the uh, Callum Smith fight with his WBA title. It was like, yeah, see, you'd rather do all this trickery, this fuckery, than fight this guy. So, yeah, the winner of Plant, it, it, and I'm I'm hoping and praying. I'm not making a prediction, but I'm hoping and praying it's been a Vitez because that's the guy Canelo has. Not been scared of. I won't say scared. I don't believe Canelo's scared of anybody. But he's been reluctant to fight this guy. So I'm hoping Benavidez wins because at that point, there's nowhere else for Canelo to go but to Benavidez. Anyways, read BBS, BBS, Black Bird Sugar, Bachelors in Boxing Studies, Televisio, Fred Sanford of the Fat. Fred Sanford of the Fistic Arts. When all is said and done, there's nothing left to say or do. Oh. <laughs>